memory I have of Tony Gwynn that I'll always remember was back in 1988 in September at the end of the season. The Padres were wrapping up, they, they, they weren't doing very well, and Gwynn did an autograph signing up at uh, the Miramar Naval Air Station. And I got there, I was the very first person in line. Nobody was there. And he walked up and I had a stack of cards and I had 24 cards with me that I brought just in case he would sign a few and I was gonna let him pick whatever. He walked up five minutes early and he looked at me and he said, all right, go ahead and put them all down on the, t on the table and I'll sign every one you've got. Oh, wow. 24 cards he signed that day for me. I met him one more time when my son was born, about two or three months after he was born at El Cajon Ford back on February 14th, 1998. And I had a picture which I posted today on Twitter and on Facebook of me holding to uh, my, my baby who's staying right next to Tony Gwen. And that's my little boy that's now 16 years old. I got one story uh, about him. It was a few years ago. The Aztecs played here in the ba baseball team, and I got about three of the ball, three you know, foul balls, and they're all Mountain West Conference balls. So uh, I was either the next season or later during that season. We went down to the Aztec Stadium, which is called Tony Gwynn Field, and I brought him up to him to have him sign it. And he looked at the ball and he kind of turned it around and saw the Mountain West logo, and he goes, "How'd you get these? We're not allowed to have. You're not allowed to have these." And I was like, "Well, I got them at San Diego. You know, I got them at the park." And he's like, "Oh." kind of gave me like a snide look and signed it and then kind of laughed and handed it to me and I went back and I pulled another ball out and it came back same one Mountain West Conference you know handed it to him he goes if you bring me one more of these I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sign it you have two of them how do you have two of them and the fact you got one is you know amazing enough the fact you have two don't tell me you have a third you know and signed it handed it back smiled and said if you do have another one I will sign it it was part of my life and watching him play he was the consummate professional consummate athlete class guy. Nobody will ever touch this man as far as his integrity, his character, and his dedication to becoming a great player. I just remember him always in the broadcast booth more than anything, being with uh, Jerry and, and being with Mud in the booth and, and his laughter. Oh my gosh, because see, I have this really huge laugh and people always say, oh Rebecca, your laugh is crazy and, and we know you for your laugh. Well, I know Tony for his laugh because I felt like I had that in common with him, that it was very distinctive and I'm sure he got made fun of the time in his life, but that's what we remember him for. Okay. And why are you here today? I just couldn't be anywhere else. I called my friends and I said, we've got to go down there. We just have to be, be with everybody that loved Tony. Okay, great. Okay. I'm here today to pay tribute to one of the greatest men that ever lived. And I, I, I think it's going to be very hard for somebody to follow and feel the shoes that he has left today. It's just that uh, has been an honor that he was alive during our lifetime, that we had the experience of knowing him, knowing what kind of a player he was and what kind of a person he was. Uh, Tony was always someone I really looked up to as a kid growing up and uh, someone that I came to when I was a kid always came down to a Falcon Park with my dad and we'd come down and uh, come when they were uh, doing batting practice and he'd always come over and sign balls and he was always just a really nice guy and someone I looked up to uh, growing up. So that's why I came down here today and just wanted to pay tribute to him because he's done a lot for San Diego. Been a Padre fan since the uh, first year of existence or expansion year. And so I saw Tony come in and see him through the years and as soon as he was here for his last game, um, just kind of felt like the right thing to do to come down here and, and be a part of this. I live in Phoenix, so I go to a lot of the spring training games and I go to the morning workouts. Uh, he always had time to sign for my kids, so always had a smile. Uh, I used to coach a little league team, 12 to 14 year olds, and I could never get them to hit off a batting tee at practice. I took them to a Padres workout and got lucky. Tony Green was in the cage hitting off of a tee, and uh, the kids were just, they were, they were really enjoying it. They were, they were soaking it in, and I kind of waited and leaned in and asked him, okay, if that guy can hit off of a tee, I think you guys can too. To me, Tony Green was like, um, um, he was like a hero because he was a really big mo role model and he did a lot for not just the Padres but for San Diego and you know he was always a really big part of my life because I remember being a toddler I used to sit on my dad's lap and we'd be watching the Padres game and I'd see him you know hit a ball into the gap and it was just always fun watching him and he was a really big part of my life. It means a lot to everybody here, everybody loved Tony. It's as simple as that. Everybody loved him. It was 
part of our San Diego culture and family. Memories of Qualcomm with my son. Yeah, in a baseball clinic that he held. Just he he meant baseball to me. He was he's the potty. I just wish that <laughs> frankly. I wish this team would take something away from all of this and see how much Tony Gwynn was admired for the way that he played the game of baseball. God bless him and I love him and I'm gonna miss him so much.